In the last video, we talked about bond energies. In this video, we're going to be talking about bond lengths. And what I mean bond lengths is what is the distance between nuclei and a covalent bond? That's how we measure bond length. Um, however, this depends on the size of your atoms. And so it is way easier if we talk about an average bond length, that is, we look at a lot of different compounds and just find out what's in the average bond length here. And so when we talk about bond lengths, we're going to be dealing in the average values, the average bond lengths. And in the previous video, we said shorter bonds are stronger. And so we can use that same idea here. The more electrons two atoms share, the stronger the bond is, and therefore it is shorter. So if we look at like atoms again, because it's, it's way easier to compare compounds that share the same atoms, a triple bond is shorter. This is picometer, by the way, 10 to the minus 12th meters. A triple bond is shorter than a double bond, which is shorter than a single bond. And it doesn't matter what compound you look at, and this will always be true. And bond length will decrease from left to right across the period. Um, because as you go from left to right, the atoms become smaller and smaller and smaller. So oxygen is smaller than nitrogen, which is smaller than carbon. So a carbon-carbon bond is bigger than a CN bond and bigger than a CO. And as you go down the periodic table in the column, bond lengths will increase. Again, for the same reason. Fluorine is smaller than chlorine and smaller than bromine. So an FF bond is shorter than a CCLCL bond, which is shorter than a BRBR bond. And the longer a bond gets, the weaker it will get as well. Now the only type of bonds we really haven't covered in this class yet are metallic bonds. So we covered covalent, we covered ionic, and the last type of bond we're going to look at are metallic bonds, that is, in a metal. And so metallic bonds are unique in that they're not covalent and they're not ionic. Rather, a bunch of metal atoms will come together and release all their valence electrons in this sea of electrons. So all the nuclei are just washed away in this sea of electrons. And we can take a look at a picture of this. Here we have the metal sodium and this blue force field looking thing is supposed to be the sea of electrons. Now normally you couldn't bring sodium nuclei together because they're all positively charged. They all are plus one cations. However, when, in, when you're in this sea of electrons, these positive charges are balanced from all these negative charges. And so it is this balancing of charge that allows metal to form. So when you look at a piece of metal, you're really looking at a substance that is sharing all their valence electrons in this sea of electrons. Unlike a covalent bond where you know, you'll find two electrons between two nuclei or an ionic bond in which an electron is fully transferred. Here, it's more like communism. All the electrons are shared equally by every atom. And that's it for bonding lengths, and I'll see you in the next video.